Hello everyone, this is Brian Sykes with AI Explore. Um, over the past many months, I've been teaching on a daily basis on LinkedIn and also Instagram, how to utilize generative AI for creatives. And I wanted to kind of step back for a second because I've jumped into some heavy topics in the LinkedIn space and I thought, I need to go back to what I started with. So if you're kind of new to the space and you've not even explored or taken a look at how to use Midjourney, uh, this is the process or the steps to get you there. So first, what in the world is generative AI? So if you're starting from the very basics, uh, let's imagine uh, you've got a high schooler. Uh, I've got two of those right now, but let's imagine that your student uh, has a coach on the soccer team. Um, and the players keep coming up to the coach and they're asking for strategies to improve their game. Uh, so the coach uses knowledge and experience they have to create different game plans. They come up with drills and they come up with unique ways to practice. And each of these strategies is based on that coach's experience that he or she has learned and observed about the game of soccer. I choose soccer because my boys play football, but we're making this more international. Uh, so in a similar way though, uh, generative AI works like an artificial coach. Uh, instead of the game of strategies, it creates new data, uh, such as text, images, video, uh, and music, and even, even responses to conversations, kind of like we're gonna engage with on here. But how does it do that? First, it learns a large amount of data uh, that it's been fed. This could be millions of lines of text, uh, it could be thousands of images, it could be hours and hours of music, it can even be references of video. But the process is like AI is observing many, many things in order to understand the rules, the techniques, and the strategies, much like that coach does in the soccer situation I gave you at the beginning. After it's learned from this data, the AI can generate new original content based around the things that it's learned. But it's not exactly the same. You see, this could be a piece of music in the style of Mozart. It could be a poem that looks like Shakespeare wrote it. It could even be an image that looks like a Picasso painting. But one thing that's important to notice is AI doesn't really understand the content that it's generating in the same way that you and I do. Um, it's simply creating new content based on patterns that it's observed in the data it was trained on. If it makes a mistake or it creates something inappropriate, uh, it's not because it wants to, it's because it's learned those patterns from its training data. Uh, so to wrap it up, generative AI is like a really good coach uh, who's seen and memorized just about every soccer game that was ever created. But instead of the game of soccer, this data set has been trained on an unlimited number of writings, paintings, music, or any other form of data and as a powerful tool, it can come up with an unlimited number of new iterations using the data that it's been trained on. Uh, so the goal is it's up to us to use this data wisely and responsibly. Okay, now how do we actually do this? I'm gonna pull up the Discord server and share with you my screen. To get started with Midjourney, the first thing you're gonna to need to do is have a Discord account. Okay, so okay, what you see here is discord.com uh, what you need to be able to do is you need to have a copy of the discord server on your machine whether it's a pc a mac uh, a tablet like an ipad your phone it really doesn't matter you're going to put discord on that piece that you're going to be working from uh, i actually have it on my mac on my ipad and on my phone uh, and it allows me to connect with it and i'm engaging with the exact same space whichever uh, approach I take to get to it. In this case, for me, it's download for Mac. I've already downloaded a copy and mine is running on my machine. So you need to download a copy and go ahead and set up an account for yourself. It's pretty intuitive, easy to follow through with the steps. The next thing you're going to want to do is go to midjourney.com. Uh, midjourney is spelled midjourney, M-I-D-J-O-U-R-N-E-Y.com. You'll come to a page that looks something like this. Now, there's Get Started, Showcase, Join the Beta, and Sign In that shows up in the bottom of your screen when you first come to Midjourney. This will not be the way you'll have to come to it each time. You actually can just go straight to it from your Discord server in the future. But for that first time, we actually need to add uh, Midjourney to our Discord server so that we can utilize it. 
So getting started, there's actually a nice walkthrough that will give you the whole process. And the mid-journey documentation is actually very thorough. They just updated it this year. And there's a lot of great information to walk you through using mid-journey. But for how to get started with mid-journey is simply this button, getting started. I've already got that tab opened up. And it walks you through the process. It tells you first, you got to download the app, the Discord app, as I've already mentioned. And it can run on the iOS system, the Android, Linux, Windows, and then any of your devices. Okay. Once it's created, you've got your Discord account created. Then the next thing is you're going to claim your account. And this is just simply verifying through the email and through the text message they may send so that you're qualifying that you are the person that's connected with this account. Okay. This is all the stuff that's covered on the Discord page. The next thing is back into Midjourney is quickly, simply clicking join the beta. Now, what this is going to do is by clicking on join the beta, you'll see it says Discord app launched. Okay, now on your side, uh, you probably actually got this and I'm gonna pull over my Discord app. This probably popped up on your screen when you launched uh, the data uh, from Midjourney. And it says Discord app launched, continue to Discord. And I can kind of begin engaging in this space. Okay, what do we do here? This was probably the most confusing and oddball space when I first came to it. First, I'm not a gamer in the way that my kids are. Uh, I knew they did Discord, kind of watching what other people were doing and, and kind of exploring in that space, but that wasn't my interest. Um, so this was a brand new space to me. The way you use Midjourney when you come to it first is this, it's this icon on the far left. Now you'll see a whole bunch of icons on my screen because I've been in Midjourney for a while. I've gotten more familiar with the Discord space. And so there's multiple uh, servers that I have uh, access to and working with. You're going to be seeing this one primarily, which is the Midjourney server. When you first come to this, how to get started in this thing is you're going to come down here to newbies. Newbies 101 or 131, 161, 191, it doesn't really matter. These are newcomer rooms, and this is where you can get your very first prompt in, and you can kind of figure out how this thing works. I'm going to jump down to Newbies 161, just a random choice. Okay, so how do we actually start prompting inside of Midjourney? Here's the thing, is what we're dealing with inside of Midjourney is it is a natural language description. What that means is you're going to be as natural in your engagement as though you were having a conversation with another person. The more natural the flow, the more better or the better response you'll get from Midjourney. A little bit about Midjourney. When you're seeing stuff and the things that's being created, you can kind of feel like, wait, I'm way behind the curve. People are doing all kinds of stuff with this, but it's not that old. In fact, David Holtz in San Francisco with Midjourney Inc., only released the beta in July 12th of 2022. That was less than a year ago. On July 25th, version 3 launched. And on November 5th, version 4 launched. And just this year, March 15th, version 5 released. And it's only very recently, version 5.1 came out. So Midjourney, even though it's version 5.1 presently, it's not old. It's only been around about a year. Um, don't feel intimidated as you jump in this space and see what a lot of other people are creating and seeing these complex prompts that have been created. We can get into that later on. But right now, let's start with a basic prompt just so you can get an idea of how this thing works. First thing you want to do is, like we've already chosen, chosen a newcomer room, and I'm going to come down to the bottom, and where you've got a little plus sign here, you've got two ways you can enter this. If you were on your iPad or a tablet or of some device, You've got a smaller screen, and so your engagement is going to be a little bit different. If you're working on a PC or a Mac, you've got a wider space, and so it responds as such. You can either click on the plus sign, and you'll see upload a file, create a thread, use apps. These are some things we'll cover at another time, but I wanted to show you this is the space that we're going to begin engaging with mid-journey. So directly to the right of the plus sign, I'm going to click, and I'm going to press the forward slash, okay? When I do that, you'll see a series of options that pop up. The first one in the list is imagine. Now, imagine is how every single uh, prompt 
takes place inside of Midjourney. We're asking it to imagine, and we are imagining something new. You can either finish typing that out, or now that it's popped up, you can literally click on it. When I click on it, imagine, prompt shows up, and I'm able to engage with this. What we can do here is anything. The world is our oyster. We can create anything you can imagine. Well, let's start with something really simple. Uh, something I've referred to often is the short, simple structure of a subject with an action um, and then what it's happening or what's kind of the environment. So we're going to keep it really, really simple here. I'm going to start with a little boy playing with a blue ball. Very, very simple. A little boy playing with a blue ball. Now, I'm going to press the return key. When you press return, you're basically saying, take this natural language description or my prompt and render it for me. Like I explained before, this is based off of its learning a whole bunch of images that's been presented to it in the past and creating it. Now, what you'll notice if you're watching the screen here is a lot of things are happening. Uh, you're seeing things that are popping up on the screen and I didn't type it. Well, what are those coming from? Well, this is just where other people, because I'm in a shared space with other prompters, uh, you're seeing their prompts as well. What that means also is anybody who is on this server is seeing my prompts. They can see, they can copy, they can paste and use those prompts at their will because it's public. If you're interested in having your private access where your information stays hidden and kept away from other people, then you'll need to create your own Discord server. That'll be another time we'll show you how to do that. So right now it's creating and I'm going to scroll down. This is my prompt. It's been finished because you'll see it no longer has a number beside it. So this is little boy playing with a blue ball. B Sykes is me, fast stealth. Um, I'll click on this image and there we go. We got four different renders that Midjourney came up with for my boy with a ball. Uh, the one that I'm interested in, I've got some options. Underneath this series of images, you see U1, U2, U3, U4, what looks like a recycle symbol, and then the same with V1, V2, V3, V4. Okay, what are these? When you see the U, U is for upscale. Okay, right now, when I click on this image set, it pulls all four images or a two by two grid up and shows me all four images. I can't do anything with this except for take the collective. What if I want just this image of the boy in the top right corner, or maybe the boy in the top left corner? The way Midjourney sees this is the first image is one, second is two, the third is down here in the bottom left, it's three, and the fourth is down in the bottom right corner. So one, two, three, and four. If I want to upscale one of these, I simply choose the number appropriate. So I like this kid in the bottom left corner. I'm going to upscale that one. So I'll go to U3. When I click on that, it will then drop it into Q to begin upscaling. Now I'll show you that pretty fast. The reason it's kind of fast in this space is because it's not technically upscaling. It already has the images in version 5 and 5.1 scaled to the size that it's going to create in. Uh, there's talk of Midjourney actually creating some really nice upscalers that will give you even larger images if you wanted to. Uh, that was actually added with some of the older versions, but they only took it to the size that we're seeing now. Okay, so little boy playing with a blue ball. We've got this little boy. We've got him with a ball. I chose the third image, and actually it shows up as image number three uh, is listed in my prop description now. Let's scroll back up and look at my images again. What you saw beneath this is V. I mentioned that V stood for variations. So I'm going to take and click for V1, representing this little boy here, and it's going to create variations. Now, here's the thing about variations. When you click on variations, it says, I want to take the idea that's here and create a very close uh, version of this. And I'm going to create four very close approximate variations of this particular image. Let me scroll down and show you what I'm talking about. What you're noticing is as this is rendering, it's very, very similar. All four of these images being created are very close to the original that was created the first go round. And it's almost done, 83%, just finished, so it dropped it to the bottom. 
here's our four variations. Uh, cute kid, great setting. It's a really interesting setup, but you'll notice that there are subtle differences in each image. This kind of reminds me of the game when I was a kid is what's different about these images. Well, literally all four of these are unique images, though similar in nature. Uh, on the top left image, he's got a little finger pointing over the top. In the second image, there's three pinkies or fingers peeking over the top of the ball. No fingers in the third image and a spread hand finger on the fourth image. And if you look at the faces close enough, you'll notice these are all unique. Um, the second image, he's got socks on where the first, third, and fourth all look to be a barefoot boy. So what you're seeing here is variations keeps it fairly tight, but you're getting slight variations applied to the image. Let me go back to our original image. Okay, so here's boy with the ball. And what if I like, these are nice, but not what I was looking for. I could go and recreate the prompt, but since I've already got the prompt in place, another thing I can do is what's called re-roll. That's this little button here to the end. When I click on this, it's gonna take that prompt and basically wash whatever was done in the original set of two by twos, and it's gonna create a brand new image imagination. This is not based off of anything created before uh, from the prompts that I created. It's basically coming up with four new images. So it's slowly processing. And as you're prompting with other people, you're going to see their stuff popping up on the screen as well. And because there's multiple people prompting at the same time, uh, your renders are basically dropping in the sequence. So as soon as my boy with the ball is done rendering, it's going to be moved to the bottom in queue. So it gets seen uh, down at the very bottom. But shortly it'll be replaced because here's a grand piano that's done by someone else. It'll be dropped right behind mine. It's 93% and watch it disappear in just a second. There it went. The reason it disappeared is because it was dropped to the bottom. So here's our boy playing with a blue ball. And what we notice here is these are four totally different images. I could re-roll all day long and every single time I'm gonna get new variations. And that's only using the simple little prompt setup that we got so far. Again, this is the very, very basics of working with Midjourney. We set up a Discord server. We've applied Midjourney and have access to the platform. We're using the newbies space. This is the basics of working inside of Midjourney. And in that, the very first prompt we played with was imagine a blue boy playing with a, or a little boy playing with a blue ball. Huh, got that one mixed up. Anyway, begin exploring in this space and follow along for more of these kind of tips. Uh, if you'd like to kind of go from here and deep dive into the next thing, two fast ways you can do that. One is I've written this book. It's AI Explore Prompt Fundamentals. It's 10 lessons that walk you through the basics of working inside of Midjourney. Uh, I'm also gonna be turning this into a video series. So if you'd be interested, follow along. You'll see that release pretty soon. But in the meantime, dive in, have fun, and enjoy Midjourney. You guys have a wonderful day. Peace out. Hey guys, thanks so much for staying around. Um, well, I appreciate you hanging out to the very end of the video. And since you did, I'd like to give you a little gift. So I mentioned this book early in the video, and this is my very first AI Explorer Prop Fundamentals. Pretty soon I'm gonna re-release re uh, the updated version for version five and 5.1. Uh, but if you purchased a copy, you get the updates for free in the future anyway. So, hey, look for this book on my Gumroad link, link and um, enter this code to get $5 off. Thanks so much.